Hello everyone. I was asked this week about how to import a conventional raw survey file that is in RW5 format into Civil 3D and then perform a traverse adjustment. Quick disclaimer, I will not be covering drawing template setup or a point and figure display settings in today's video. So let's get started by taking a quick look at our RW5 file. We'll open it in Notepad. So you can see at the top, this was shot using Carlson Surf CE onboard data collector. And a couple things to note that is that are going to be important later. You can see that there was set collection happening in this particular file. The BD, BR, that's backsat direct, backsat reverse, foresight direct and reverse, where they're plunging the scope and taking doubles or sets. Now Carlson uses these to indicate for their particular data collector. And I only bring this up because it's going to be a little bit important later on how we convert this file. So just keep that in mind. But what we would like to do is convert this RW5 into the standard text file or ASCII file that Civil 3D is looking for if you want to maintain your distance and angles, your conventional file, and that is an FBK format because those, this is what we would like to convert to. So how do we do that? Well, there are several ways, and I'm not going to cover them all, but one way is just to use your data collector software to export directly to FBK. Many of these data collector companies will write directly out to the format that we're looking for, the FBK. So let's say you don't have that option, but you still want to use that raw RW5. You don't want coordinates because you want to make adjustments and take a look at all of your angular relationships. So the first way we can do it is through an older command that's been in Civil 3D for a long time. On the home tab, we go to create ground data, survey data collection link. And this is basically the old TDS survey link software. And we have a lot of conversions we can do here. If I go to conversions, convert file format, you can see if you had an older SDR format, a Topcon FC4, quite a few formats that we can convert directly to our FBK in here. However, there is a little bit of an issue here and I'll show it to you. We'll select our RW5 and we're gonna go to FBK. Choose a file and I'll call it test. And we hit convert. So I'm gonna open up our test FBK. And what you'll see here is you can see a note about the select set collection that's going to happen, but there's no data. There's no angular measurements. It shows nothing relative to the set collection between those two points. And why that is, this older command or survey data collection link, it's looking for the classic TDS Survey Pro RW5 format. And so it doesn't understand those BR, BD lines that we just talked about. Okay, so what are our other choices? Well, we have an, one other option in Civil 3D. If I go to my toolbox, I'm in 2018.2, so I have the latest updates. But if I go into miscellaneous utilities under survey, we have a convert RW5 to FBK command. So this comes from a, a particular customer that was looking for a converter based on their format. Lucky for us, it covers many of the Carlson inputs and some of the other companies that write to RW5. It covers some of the newer line codes. So let's give it a shot. We're going to right click and select execute. We're going to select our final. We're just going to leave it final FBK. And now let's go take a look at our final FBK that we just created. So we'll go down to where the set collection is happening. And sure enough, this is looking better, right? So in the FBK format, when it sees set collection or doubles, phase one and phase two are how they, had, they are designated to designate the direct or the reverse or plunge scope shot. So you can see we're in much better shape. So let's try this one and see how it performs and see if we can make some adjustments. So I'm going to go to the survey tab. And before I do that, let me say this. Typically, if I was really wanting to set up my file correctly and maybe I was going to access some GIS data on top of my survey data, a good thing to do would be go into my settings, edit drawing settings with a right click and choosing my state plane coordinate system for this particular area. Again, it's not required, but if you'd like to access any type of GIS overlay and have it translate to the right spot, this is how you do it. So the drawing now knows where it is in space. I'll save it. And now I want to go down to the survey to bring to start bringing in the FBK file. So the first thing I'm going to do is go on the survey database and I'm going to select set working folder. This is going to tell the 
survey database where to go. So it's going to be in an external database. I'm going to leave it on my C drive. Then I'm going to right click and say new local survey database. And I'll call this final. So now it is the active survey database. We created a database on the disk and we're ready to go. Now, if you had your template set up correctly and a lot of your defaults, sometimes you wouldn't have to worry about this, but something good to always do is to right click on the survey database and say, edit the settings. This is where you can set the distance units, which are very important to be US foot. And also you see coordinate zone and you may be thinking, well, we, we already set the coordinate zone from the drawing. But because this is in an external database, it can actually have its own coordinate system. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes you may have a particular coordinate zone and you would like to project that database into drawings that have multiple coordinate system. So let's say I want to display this survey data into a file that has the same coordinate system. Great. No translation. What if I have maybe a UTM grid system designated in my drawing? and then I'm in a state plane system in my survey database. When I insert that survey data into that UTM grid drawing, it will translate that data into UTM and display at the correct location. I'm not gonna set the coordinate zone here, I'm not worried about it, but I'm, the most important thing is a US foot for the distance. And you can see there's tons of other correction and defaults that you can set. Again, as I said before, we're not gonna go deep there. So we're ready to import. So I'm going to go to import events, right click, import survey data. Again, I have another chance to hit the settings. You can see I have a button here before I go next, but I've already checked my settings. Notice the different options to bring in. So if I had exported Land XML off the data collector software instead of uh, RW5, I could do that. If I just brought off a point file, so let's say I wasn't worried about adjustments. I wasn't going to make any type of determination based on the conventional status of the data. I just want to bring in a CSV so I could export a CSV off of the data collector and bring that in as a point file. And then finally, if I have points in the drawing, I could bring that in. So let's click on final. We're going to say next. Because this is conventional survey data, we do need to create a network. So if I had multiple, this name might matter, but it really doesn't. So I'll just keep the name the same. Next, and then I have a last chance to take a look at my defaults again. You know, like I said, we're not going to worry about how this looks. If the points, you know, have blocks or the lines are the right color, I'm not worried about that. But I will toggle these three, insert network, figure, and survey points into the drawing as it imports. So there we go. So from this display, you can see that none of my points or lines were set up. They're all little X's. So for a location survey, I'm not in good shape here, but I'm just trying to show the math and how to get to adjustments. So the start points up here in green, and you can see the dark line represents the traverse route. So we come down this way and then back up. We actually set up on this point here. This is the other fixed point. The green rec represents the two fixed point. And I will close the horizon or make a final turn into this last point so that I could do an angular adjustment. So I have the data imported, that's great. I have a network, as you can see here. I'm going to expand networks a bit. And I'm going to right click on control points. So you can see that matches exactly what we saw in the RW5 file. We've got our two 5001, 5002. I can go to my setups. If I right click and edit, you can see all of my setups. I start with 5002, back site 5001. So now we're ready to make an adjustment. For an adjustment, we need a traverse. So I'm going to right click and say new traverse. I'll call this final one for the first traverse. I can give it a description. This is important here. So on the initial station is my first setup or occupied point. I type in the point number 5002 in this case. And as soon as I hit tab, because it's a simple loop here, it knows that your back site was 5001. You went to 5003, 5004 as I'm circling here, back to 5001 here at the bottom. And our final foresight was a closing shot into 5002. So now we have a traverse. And you can see it here. If this is highlighted, I can see it in my window here. I'm going to right click first of all, and I'm going to select edit traverse before we make an adjustment. And I'll bring this up and make it large. Okay, so you can see my setups here. I'll go to the top. 
So set up on 5002, back set 5001. You can see here is where we go into our set collection, phase one, phase two angle. Again, it's, it's a little confusing over here when you see the coordinates. These are not the final average coordinates. These are the running total. It's doing the averaging behind the scenes. So now I'm ready to take a look at the closure. To do that, I'm going to right click on that same traverse name and I'm gonna select traverse analysis. So to begin with, I'm not gonna do angular. I'm gonna do just a traverse analysis. I'm gonna do compass rule. For vertical adjustment, I'm gonna say none. And we're not gonna update the survey database because we don't wanna update the points. We're just testing now and reviewing our results. Let's hit okay. So several reports are gonna pop up. This is a, the vertical adjustment report, which is nothing. Here we can see the each particular leg and the new coordinates of each leg. You can see the two free points here moving. And then last we can get our raw closure. So without any adjustment, what was my error? My absolute error was around a tenth. And here's the error in the two directions and the direction of the error. And finally our final precision. I have a warning because I have some defaults where I'm asking for particular tolerance. So it will flag me if it doesn't uh, fit within a particular tolerance, maybe for rural versus urban. But again, you can set those or not even use them if you don't, if you don't need them. Let's go back to Traverse Analysis, right click Traverse Analysis. This time I'm going to do Angular, still Compass Rule. We'll close the vertical, close that guy. And you can see on this very last one, you can see our angular error throughout those legs. There we go. Again, we get the same warning. And then when we're ready to perform the final, we can go back to traverse analysis, update my survey database. Similar report with our results. I'll close those. And now our survey database, the points in the database, all the free points and any point that's a side shot from those free points should be updated with the new coordinates based off those new locations. So the goal today was just to show the basic workflow for bringing in a RW5 conventional survey file format into Civil 3D so that you can perform a traverse analysis. I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.